Hello and welcome to Blood West. This is a game on Steam Early Access, and if you'd like to check it out, there is a link in the description. This is a game that I purchased with my own money after I read a Eurogamer article. Yes, I know, I know. Now, here's the thing. This is an immersive stealth sim FPS. A very old school in nature. It has a grid-based inventory, for example. It has uh, a very interesting progression system. And I wanted to show it to you so badly, I, as I said, went out and purchased it myself. So, let's start a new game and see what we can do. I'm going to call myself this, because that's me. Now, bear in mind, it is a horror game as well, because obviously it's called Blood West, right? Yeah, it has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam as well, by the way. So if that is something that you take note of, then, well, there it is. Anyway, welcome to Blood West. Use the standard keys to move around. Talk to the nearby totem to get your bearings. All right, so here we go. Let me see what I can do here. All right. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I got stuck almost to me. Oh. It would happen to me, wouldn't it? It would happen to me. Oh, it worked. It worked. And he is even in one piece. Huh? Who are you? Oh, me? You mean us? Nothing but an amalgamation of souls. More important question is, who are you? I... I don't really know. The answer is, you're undead. We brought you here by means of our immense powers from whenever place you've been before. We know of your exploits and achievements. Your fame reaches wide across the country. The nasty rumors about you reach even further. You're our ace in a sleeve. Before you ask, no, we cannot send you back. Not yet. See, that's the nature of every summoning. It must have a reason. And a reason you have. As an undead outside of others' influence, you will be our torch in the dark. Your spark will become the flame to purify the rot of this world and free us from the unending cycle of despair. Well, what should I do? Search for the evil lurking in this world. Smell the sulfur in the air. Taste the corruption. Understand the shattered reality. Sense the vitriol staining the remains. Only then will you be free again and able to leave. Alright, good to know. Alright, so as I said before, this is a stealth sim, so stealth is pretty important, but you also have a variety of other methods to achieve victory, where, you know, basically any way you can, I think. You don't have a weapon, get past the enemy. Alright, so hold left control or use C to toggle. Okay, I'm going to toggle because I really don't like holding buttons, so we're just going to... Just gonna stealth by. So yeah, we have a detection meter as well, as you can see there. Notice the detection meter at the bottom of the screen, there's also a compass at the top of the screen. Alright, so, that enemy, obviously, can, ooh, okay, yeah, we don't want to make too much noise, what's this? I will need that. I will need that, yes, indeed. Alright, let's just stealth around here, line of sight is very, mm-hmm, yes, as I said, line of sight is very important, almost got myself seen. Okay, there we go. Sneaky mode. Okay, bear in mind, every single time you move, boom, they can hear you. And that is obviously something to be very aware of. What's in here? I, I See now, which way do I go? Which way do I go? Is this a secret this way? Or, uh, yeah. Ah, yes, hello there. Golden nugget. Very, very useful. Potentially. I have no idea what it's for. Probably currency for something or other. There is a weapon laying down there. Very useful indeed. Mm-hmm. Very good. Okay, hello there. I have a rusty axe. Equip it. You can equip up to two weapons. Big weapons fit only in the primary slot, while small weapons can be put into any slot. Okay, use the numeric keys for... Uh, yeah, as you can see right there, use the numeric keys for selections. I obviously don't have to worry about this too much, but yes, it has the... Uh, this sort of classic grid style of inventory, and I know a lot of people are big fans of this, myself included. I, I think it adds a whole bunch of, well, 
obviously it adds inventory management, but I feel like it adds a lot of extra strategy and, and decision making to your journey through the game. Because let's say you come across a really, really good weapon, but you also have this other weapon that you really enjoy using, then you're going to have to choose between them instead of just being like, oh, okay, this, uh, you know, my weight is fine, so I'm, I'm okay to basically just stuff it in my backpack and then I can carry, you know, a cannon and... Uh, you know, an artillery piece or something in my backpack, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, slots for equipment. Tools, single use, and artifacts can be equipped in special slots. In other words, a bandage. Very nice indeed. Let me, uh, let me put that on three. There we go. And now I'm wondering where I have to go because I'm thinking to myself, okay, there's, there doesn't seem to be anything this way. Yeah. Boom. Slash. Slash with that wonderful, wonderful axe. There we go. So you can use a left mouse button for light attacks or hold right mouse button for heavy attacks. Attacks from surprise deal much more damage. So that's the reason why being stealthy is usually a good way to go. Critical. Yeah, get him. Get him. Nice. Whew. Get out. Get out of there. I, I can loot him. I can loot him. Really? Okay. Take all. Very nice. Can I kick him off? Uh, is there a kick? No, there's a lean button, though. There, there's actually leaning in this game as well, by the way. So if you are uh, liking the whole leaning, sneaking sort of thing, then yeah, that's uh, definitely a good way to go about it. All right. So do I have to go down here? I'm not sure if I have to go down here, but I will go down here. Ooh, a sort of shotgun and a rusty knife. Hello there, thank you. And I, I assume if I jump off here, I die. So let's not go that way, shall we? Okay, so sort of shotgun. I can put this in my secondary weapon slot, and I can also use this. And you can see exactly what kind of damage it does. Okay, so rusty to the, to, rusty to the point it almost breaks in your hand. Good to know. Probably not the best idea then. All right. Well, the shotgun is looking pretty fun. Got to reload. Because obviously I had nothing in the barrel initially. And as I said, it is very much a sim in that respect where, you know, bullets are pretty um, pretty tangible in the I game. That. We found a note. Maybe it's important. Can I read it? Aha, read it. Animated dead, a seemingly mindless creature born from malicious dark magic, is not quite the species worth observing. They can stare at a wall for hours, seemingly even enjoying it, and then shamble thoughtlessly around, until they spot a living creature. Apparently, the sight of the living being wakes something inside of them, a murderous instinct. As expected, these pathetic creatures are not an issue for any experienced hunter, but only a fool would underestimate a whole group of animated deads. When it spoke, a living being. When it spots, not spoke, ha! <laughs> when it spots a living being, it will simply try to destroy it with its claws. At times, it can even charge, showing surprising speed, which has proven fatal for many novice hunters. So in other words, that's just a little bit of a, a tip as to how to progress and fight in the game. Ooh, a rusty revolver. Thank you. And we got some, some golden ammo. Firearms can use different types of ammunition. Switch between ammo types by using V. All right. So let's have a look here. So the rusty revolver, let's put that on there instead. And once again, you can do this. And you can also rotate your stuff too. Golden short ammo. 45 ammunition made out of cursed gold. Damage. Wow. Damage inflicted increased by 100% when you use this ammo type. That's actually pretty crazy. All right, let me see here. Gonna have to, okay, I don't need to reload with this right now, so that's absolutely fine. And generally, aha, uh, generally headshots are gonna be able to kill most enemies in the game. Again, realism. You won't find any answers lingering here. Better move towards the dark places and glimmering gold. Well, again, uh, what should I do? Search for the evil lurking in this world. Ah, yes, fine. Thank you. Yes, I see. It's just a repeat of what he said before. I better find someone who can explain a thing or two. Yes, indeed. All right. So we can also press J to open our journal, and uh, they do recommend consulting it often. 
All right, but now here's the here's the really cool thing about Blood West. You are in an open world that is completely unrestricted. You can basically go wherever you want. There are no loading screens as far as I am aware. And you can do whatever you want. And there are enemies and there are people you can speak to, I assume. I mean, I obviously have not played the game uh, beyond just starting it up. But uh, yeah, that's usually what I do. I like to try and experience things alongside you most of the time. Anyway, let's uh, let's actually have a look here. Wait a minute. Wasn't there something that I that I saw here? Apparently not. Apparently I didn't see anything right there. Okay, that's kind of interesting. Thought I saw something pop up on the screen to basically say, oh yes, press F to pick this up, but apparently I didn't. Okay, I am a very uh, very smart individual by the looks of things. Okay, so we obviously don't want to... Oh, hello there. Are you an enemy? Somehow I doubt it. No, this is a safe zone. <laughs> okay. Here you can trade, for example. Buying a map may prove useful. Some enemies may respawn upon your death or rest. Speak with the Shaman and Totem of Souls. What is it? The dead man I buried walks again. I sense the restless spirits nearby. But still, I hoped your body would be protected by my charms. They were insufficient. As it seems. Well, what happened to me? I found a body. Your body. Among the remains of monsters. And decided to... Okay, uh, who are you? I am nobody. Used to talk to spirits. Right, okay, I have no more questions. Very, very good. Okay, can we trade? Yes. Okay, so we can trade. Oh, he... Look at this. He has a spirit bow, which allows us to, well, uh, kill ourselves while shooting arrows, because... Apparently, every arrow costs 3 HP. Yeah, that's actually pretty crazy. All right, so yeah, otherwise, Raven's Skull, what's this? Used to teleport to the last Totem of Souls you bound your soul to. Okay, and there's also ammunition here too. I have $50 on me right now. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm kind of rich. Yeah, I'm kind of rich. Uh, although, <laughs> saying that, if you take a look at the Bone Knife, for example, it's $700. So yeah, it's probably not that rich, right? Anyway, uh, I'm actually thinking to myself, should I just, I can't buy a healing potion even. Okay, I guess I'm going to buy a map, right? Guess I will buy a map. That is what I will buy. Thank you very much. And there we have it. Okay, you have enough experience to level up as well. Open the character screen and select some new skills. So obviously, here we go. This is, this is the skill tree. This is actually kind of crazy, the amount of stuff that you can get here. All right, so what do we want to do? I have no idea. Increase melee weapon speed. I am actually wanting to be... Yes. I want to be sneaky. I want to be as sneaky as possible. So that is exactly what we're going to do. So, I mean, there's a whole bunch of different things here. So, in other words, you can get increased experience. You can gain resistance to acid and fire. You can... Uh, find additional ammo while looting damage is increased by 200% for melee when HP drops below 25%. I can see that actually being really, really good for someone that is actually proficient at this game. In other words, you're going to, on purpose, put your HP below 25 and then you're going to be able to deal massive damage in melee and just be really good at dodging, blocking, and so on and so forth. Maybe even stealthing and things like that. So, yeah. Anyway, what we're going to do is we are going to use Invisible Man. We're going to take that. Sneaking is easier by 25%. That always sounds good to me. And we are going to Lessons Weapon Sway when aiming by 25%, or with Melee Weapon in hand, Stamina regenerates by 50%. I think that actually sounds really, really good, so I'm going to take that. There we have it. All right, pretty good. Yeah, so we're going to use the axe for the moment. I will talk to the totem in just a second as well. Just got to make sure that I'm not missing anything here because you never know whether there may be an item or two that could be useful. I think I saw something here. Can I not pick up any of his stuff? Ah, of course I can't. Since you are here, let us explain what is needed of you. This place has been corrupted by a curse and you need to find its source. We don't know what has brought it to this land, so keep your eyes open. Bring us anything you may deem weird or disturbing. And if you happen to get lost, come to us. We may be able to help or ease your burden. 
For now, we know where you can begin your search. Follow the most strong scent of darkness around, under the burned church. Within ruined city you will find part of your answers. Anything else? All right, well, there you go. That seems to be what we need to do. I need to bring the cursed items to the Totem of Souls from the church. Okay, so it says search the church. All right, let's do that. So here's the map. This is the map that we purchased. And you can see here, this is basically the open world. So this is literally all open, as far as I'm aware. There are no load screens, as I said before. And uh, yeah, we're hopefully going to be able to uh, murder this ghoul in just a second. Oh, uh, hello there. I'm being seen. Can I hide behind this? <gasps> I can hide behind the cactus. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. That is actually hilarious. I love it. Okay, I'm going to need him to turn around. Unfortunately, I put myself into this situation instead of putting myself into a situation where I could actually sneak up on, uh, sneak up on him from behind. But uh, I think this is okay because I did take the sneak increase. There we go. So sneaking is 25% easier for myself, and I think it's going to be pretty simple for me to sneak up on him. Stay down. Nice critical. All right, there we go. Ooh, teeth. The trader will pay well for this item. Oh, thank you. Very nice. And there's also another ghoul over here, so we will, of course, be attempting to... Oh, hello there. Okay. No, no, no. No, no, no. Okay. Be a little bit careful. Yeah, okay, there's there's two of them. I'm not entirely sure how I'm supposed to deal with two in a stealth fashion, but I guess this way. Oh, he saw me. No, no, no. Ah, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, big attack. <laughs> Headshot. That's what you get, sir. That is what you get. Sorry, I didn't mean to actually hit you when you were dead. All right. Okay, I'm actually pretty happy that I was able to do that without taking damage. As you can see, they do a lot of damage whenever they hit you as well, because you, you saw, obviously, that previous guy that we encountered in the cave. He was able to deal uh, 25 damage to me. And I only have 100 HP, so bear that in mind. You know, it's pretty, uh, pretty harsh, pretty hardcore about the whole thing. No regenerating health here. That's uh, that's the only thing that you really need to know about that. <laughs> so let me actually just see what's going on over in this direction. Nothing? Are you serious? I came all this way and there's nothing. You imbeciles. Ah, yes, of course. I mean, that's actually fine, to be honest. I mean, there might be something along the lines later on. Because bear in mind, this is still in early access. you got to bear that in mind. It's still in early access, so it's really... Um, it's really amazing what they've been able to do so far. All right, so scribbles on a piece of paper. Maybe it's important. Okay, let me let me read this. Um, let's see. Behavior. The ethereal, ethereal nature of spirits makes them less vulnerable to traditional firearms, but silver ammunition has been proved to be much more effective. Exper experienced shooters also know to wait the spirit out, baiting a charge attack. That's when the tormented soul is most exposed okay so silver ammunition is really really good for spirits so if we do come across any spirits then we know that if we don't have any silver it might be a little bit more difficult all right good to know what's this over here a cigar box what does the cigar box do aha okay so it's basically just a way for me to uh, make a little bit of extra money it's twenty dollars to sell the cigar box pretty nice and there's another ghoul over there. I'm actually wondering how much freedom I can I can afford myself by running um, really, really fast and then just going to sneak at the last second. Might be able to get more done in that fashion. That was pretty nice. Okay, there we go. Another bandage. That's always good. And it seems like I have a lot better detection rates as well. So I don't know whether you've noticed that, but it seems to me like... The enemies don't really detect me as much as they used to. Easy. All right. Come on, come on, come on. Give me, give me, give me your loot. Give me. He has nothing? You have nothing, sir. 
You have nothing? Are you serious? Ah, uh, never mind. Never mind. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I'm wanting. I'm wanting all the loot. I'm wanting all the loot. Oh, hello, hello. Wait a minute. There's another ghoul over there. I'm kind of wanting to be a little bit uh, thorough about this as well, so I want to make sure I don't miss anything because this is very old school in the way that it does things as well in terms of its looting system and so on. Okay, I'm just gonna try and sneak up on this guy. Ah, no. Ah, no, no. Oh, okay, yeah. Literally almost died. Literally almost died. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, let me see. We want. Where's the where are the bandages? There they are. Okay, so it immediately stops bleeding and heals 10 HP over 2 seconds when used. So this is basically a case of, if you're bleeding, use a bandage. But we are going to use a healing potion. Boom. Drink it. Drink it up real good. There we go. And bear in mind, the healing potion is not instant either. Too much of those. It's going to take a while to restore your HP and look at that there are some people down there as well all right so let me actually just put the healing potion on here just in case I need it you never know and I also picked up notes on a prodigal uh, prodigal daughter right yes what's this oh it's actually an enemy okay it's actually an enemy this is this is kind of interesting um, a study could be written by observing alteration known as Prodigal Daughter in the circles of hunters and daredevils brave enough to venture into barren lands. While it remains mostly human, at least on first glance, the damage done by dark magics to its brain seems to be most severe, even if it maintains the ability to speak. Right. Uh, it, it apparently uh, suffers from megalomania as well, seeing itself as a beautiful young lady and demanding total and unconditional admiration from the whole world, all the while wearing a mask that hides deformation and dreadful countenance and carrying a shotgun. Therefore, it is best to kill Prodigal Daughter swiftly, if possible, as any prolonged combat may prove fatal. Shooting it in the face will break the mask and make the creature more aggressive, which may be undesirable. Anything that may reveal the ugliness, be it a living being or even an inanimate object like a mirror, becomes a target of a vicious and furious attack. The creature will not cease its attacks until its target is destroyed or itself is annihilated. Ah, oh, fantastic. How pleasant. Yes, so that means I am probably going to die. What do you bet? Okay, so can I can I climb can I climb down this? I mean, it changes the reticule, right? It changes changes the crosshair. So I'm thinking that I should be able to climb down this. Can I? Yeah. Yes. Yes. There we go. All right. It's been a while since I've done these kinds of things in a game, so I'm a little bit a um, little bit antsy about the whole thing. Anyway. Seem to be doing all right so far, and there's a there's a spirit over there. We don't have any silver ammunition, so it might be a bit problematic. Okay, thankfully it's not very good at seeing me, so I should be able to cross the bridge without too many difficulties. At least I hope so. There's something over here. There's also a body hanging from uh, hanging from the bridge. I actually wonder, can I shoot the ropes? Because if I can shoot the ropes, I might be able to get the loot on the bodies, if there if there is any loot, that is. There's a chest. Hello there, chest. Purple revival, what's this? It removes all care uh, cares? No, remo removes all curses and soul flaws. And this increases maximum stamina and also stamina regeneration. And damage received from ethereal attacks increased by 350% for 15 seconds. However, it does provide you total resistance to physical attacks. So these potions are very, very powerful, but they also have drawbacks. As you might expect, of course. And I think... I wonder what happens if I jump. I'm going to die, right? Yeah, probably going to die. I'm still wondering about that, though. I'm uh, I'm curious, you know. I mean, do I do I really want to without fighting one of these spirits first? Probably not, right? I don't think that's a particularly good idea. Oh, hello. That'll come in handy. Oh, apparently my character said that that will come in handy. All right. What, what what is that? What did I just pick up there? 
Bowler hat. A bottle of wine, not the fancy kind, but it does the job. Reduces damage from ethereal enemies by 75% for 360 seconds? In other words, I can fight one of these guys relatively easily, and I'm not going to take that much damage. But do I want to? That is the question. Do I want to? I don't know. Probably not. Is there another way that I can uh, climb down here? Doesn't seem like it. So it seems like I will have to go up again. No, no, no. Come on. There we go. And I suppose I'll just go across the bridge this way. I assume that there will probably be a way for me to explore downwards uh, later on. I mean, I can assume that to be the case at least. I just picked up a silver fork. Yep. I picked up a silver fork. What does it do? Yep. It's a trade item. Indeed. Alright, so there's actually a ghoul here. So generally, if I... If I stealth attack these ghouls... I'm usually able to kill them with a light attack instantaneously. Which is real nice. And I, uh, these are enemies, right? Yeah, I believe these are actually enemies. Let me see if I can sneak up on one. This guy's got a revolver. Okay, yeah, I need to I need to attack these with a heavy attack. That is good to know. <laughs> uh, that is good to know. I did get shot by him, but didn't it didn't do that much damage at least. Okay, so. There's ammo in this revolver, right? So what you can actually do is you can unstock the ammo from it and then you can take it for yourself and then use it in your own weapon. I think that's actually amazing. I, I like that a great deal. All right, so let me see if I can actually kill one of these bird men in one hit with a heavy attack. I'm going to assume that maybe yes. Yes, there we go. Okay, so heavy attack kills the bird man without too many difficulties. Let us unstock the ammo there once again. All right, we might have to start getting our pistol out. But you can approach these situations from any angle you wish. That's the whole point of the game, obviously, because it is indeed an immersive sim of sorts, stealth sim. And uh, if you want to go in guns blazing, you can do that. Ooh, okay, that was a bit close. I literally thought to myself, okay, there's a guy in there. Gotta be a bit careful. Got some more short ammo here for the shotgun, I guess, or something. I can go up the ladder here as well. Wait, what's this? Nothing. There is another ladder here, though. I am actually making a huge amount of noise by running around on these floorboards, so I should be a little bit careful. I'm surprised I can't pick up the cleaver here. Okay. Ow. Right. Um, yeah. I actually thought to myself, this guy has armor on, he's obviously going to be able to block most of the first attack that I make, but uh, I decided to go for it anyway. What? Where are you going? Where are you? Ooh, okay. Okay. Don't worry. I'm fine. I'm fine. Gonna take a healing potion. I don't even know what this thing was. It's a human... Oh, wow. Okay, that's creepy. That is real creepy right there. That is real creepy. Okay. Thankfully, I seem to be okay. Oh, that, that thing is seeing me. Ooh, that was close. 
my detection meter was at at almost 90 well i think it was at 99 percent. to be honest i think it was at 99 percent. so let me see what i can do here i'm just gonna try and sneak by hello yeah that's a prodigal daughter right there that is a prodigal daughter okay can i hide in the wardrobe no i cannot you know, just I call it, call it a wardrobe and not the closet. Haha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, indeed. All right, so wait a minute, wait a minute. Sort of shotgun. I'm going to need one of these, I think. Diamonds are forever. Yeah, I am eternal. <laughs> oh, one hit. Okay, I'm surprised. I actually thought to myself, this is going to be really, really difficult. But apparently not. Apparently it was a lot easier than anticipated. Okay, phew. A little bit worried there. Uh, I need to sort out my inventory really, really badly. I can't take this yet. Uh, yeah, this is, this is bad. Yeah, as you can see right there, I'm going to have to turn this. Can I not rotate? I can't rotate the... Um, the healing potions, amusingly enough. Ah, uh, what a terrible, terrible thing. Okay, ah, uh, these revolves actually only sell for $4. So I'm actually just going to drop these. And I'll take, uh, I'll take this in just a second. I should have gone back to the merchant and sold, to be honest. I think that probably would have made the most sense. So let me actually just put that right there. Because this sells for $17. These shotguns sell for a lot, right? So I think it's actually a really good idea for me to do that. Rusty knife is not that good, as you can see. So maybe it would be a good idea for me to get rid of this it sells for one dollar is it really that worth it i don't know i don't think it's really worth it for me to keep it around but i'm going to keep it nevertheless just in case but i don't think it's going to be that good um i can also unstock the ammo from this shotgun right here so i can hopefully use it with what i have and oh look at that all the, all the revolvers that i dropped fantastic what's going on in here i see i see a little vignette around my screen somehow what what, what does that mean what am i walking into right here a nest of some kind, that's for sure. Golden Skull. Okay, so I got it. Oh, that means the enemies are all seeing where I am right now. Yep. Alright, run, run. Let's get out of here. Oh, yeah, please travel down the ladder as slowly as possible. Yeah, that sounds like a good plan, doesn't it? Okay, let me just run out of here. Okay, so I have to take this back to the Totem of Souls. I have no idea which way I came from. I think it's probably over this way. Are the enemies after me still? Was I able to escape? Yes, I think that was the reason why I was seeing the little vignette around the uh, edges of the screen, because I was getting closer to the item that I needed, which was indeed that uh, that skull, uh, symbolic skull thing, golden, golden thing, yeah. That thing, yes, indeed. Very, very descriptive of me, isn't it? Anyway, let me make my way over here. I kind of want to try fighting with some of those ethereal spirits, to be honest, but I don't have any silver stuff, so it might be, uh, well, I wouldn't say impossible, but it might be more difficult, and then I'll end up using resources that I don't really want to use, you know, that sort of thing. Okay, wait, is there anything down here? Did I go down here already? Ow. Oh. Oh, dear. Well, this is bad. Okay, shotgun. Well, the shotgun is very effective, as you can quite clearly tell. Not bad. That was a minor. Okay. Uh, if there's some, oh, there's so much stuff to explore. There really is. Okay, I'm I'm very much enjoying this game, and uh, I think you can probably tell because I'm getting carried away by exploration and uh, murdering everything. Yes, indeed. Well, wow. you can even see enemies at the bottom of this uh, mine shaft here as well. There's a Molotov. Thank you. Good. That's very, very, uh, very pleasing. I should really go back to the merchant, shouldn't I? I should really go back to the merchant. There's no point in me being here right now. I mean, generally, yeah, there is, because obviously I'm going to be able to... Ah, rusty knife. That is absolutely useless. Okay, yeah, so... Can I actually... No, I can't do damage to things like that. Okay, good to know. Because I was thinking to myself, can I actually use melee attacks to open up various objects? 
but that doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, there is actually a note. Notes on a miner. In other words, they're giving me information about the miner enemy type, which I don't know whether I care about that much, gotta say. Oh, I can't believe I died. I thought to myself, oh, you know what? I'm going to just drop down here and I'm going to be able to, um, uh, you know, I'm going to be able to just, you know, stealth attack him. But I forgot that whenever I fall down, I make more noise. So he detected me and that was that was that. Anyway, this actually gives me a good opportunity to show you the death system as well. And it's also the reason why I actually think this game is really, really cool. Because what happens is you see here. You receive a soul floor with every death, and three of them will turn into a horrible curse. You can resist the effects of the soul floor using potions and artifacts. That's actually really cool in my opinion. So I have, um, I have this soul floor down here. I actually don't know what it does. Uh, but let's speak to the totem. This item you have here, give it to us. We feel the dark envelope of the curse round it. We may be able to figure out its history, and maybe trace the source. We are certain this skull is the thing that started the townfall and gave way to the birth of the curse. When the soldiers at the fort were building a new well, they found this skull, and they gave it to the colonel, who liked such oddities and old artifacts. He didn't even realize when the skull started whispering into his mind. They found the gold under the fort, thanks to these whispers. And thus the way to the curse has been opened wide. Oh yeah, there we go. Alright, so that is exactly what has happened here. And that's the reason why all of these ghouls and various other monstrosities have been unleashed. Many a spirit here. All right, can we trade, sir? Yes, indeed, we can trade. So I would like to... Um, oh, yeah, also this. Th this is an artifact, apparently. So basically what you can do is you can equip these artifacts. And as you see here, I now gain resistance to acid by 50%. But it also reduces my maximum HP by 15. So there's a number of different things that you can equip to sort of change how... Um, change how you uh, you respond to various enemies and so on and so forth. So it's actually kind of amazing. So for example, this remains from a bird man, increases stamina regeneration by 25%, but it lowers max stamina by 10%. Personally, I think this is really good. So I'm gonna be taking that. And what else do we have? Do we have anything else here? Yeah, we have some teeth. I'm gonna sell the rusty knife, the golden coin. What's this? This is another artifact. While equipped, it will protect you from obtaining, obtaining new soul flaws upon death. Um, can be exchanged for blessings at the Totem of Souls. Okay, I'm going to put that on there just in case I die again. You never know. There's also another golden coin that I have here too. Going to sell the golden nugget that I found. And we can also sell a bunch of other things. It's like the notes here. Notes on the prodigal daughter. Notes on spirits. We already know all about that. Thank you very much. So we don't need to know. And I think that's probably all there is so i will now just be sorting out my inventory a little bit i'm very bad at sorting out inventories so do bear that in mind and uh yeah just gonna put that round about here that seems pretty good to me we're just gonna make sure all of our ammunition is in the same place just put that coin all the way over there put these things here and then we're pretty good right yeah then we're pretty good all right so that is, uh, that is probably going to be it for this episode of Blood West. If you would like to see more from me and this game, then by all means let me know. And uh, I'd highly recommend just checking it out, to be honest with yourself, because there is a link in the description. It's really, really cheap for how much content it gives you and how polished the experience is. And if you like what you've seen so far, I think you've already made up your mind about the game anyway. And uh, yeah, you've maybe maybe already purchased it who knows anyway i thank you very much for watching and i'll see you next time